Right, so hello there. Now, I'm going to show you the utility of a rotobat by showing you how quickly it works. So, what I'm going to do, safety goggles on, is I'm going to apply a little bit of grease to the male stem on this rotobat. And I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to explain what the rotobat is used for while we're using it. There is a point to this demonstration. So, to use a rotobat, what you want to do, attach your sample to the bottom. The one thing you never want to do, zoom it up here a little bit is seal this valve first. So the first thing we're going to do, if it hasn't been done already, turn the cooling water on. You can see it running through the coils. Down here, I'm going to turn the pump on first. Seal the container. Now, I turn the pump on first with the valve open on the off chance that perhaps the, the pump cycles backwards on its first loop. This basically guarantees that we don't build pressure. And then I'm going to turn the rotation here to about 11, 11.30. Now, as this is running, what you'll notice is that this is circulating in a hot water bath. This puts four things in your favor when you try to remove the salt. First thing it does is that it heats the material so this way it creates a high uh, vapor pressure for the solvent that you're evaporating. So this won't work for something like water, but definitely a lot of organic solvents disintegrate quickly. The pump is going to create vacuum, drive it up. Our condenser coils here are going to ensure that we condense the liquid and the rotation here guarantees this high surface area. So I've got the set um, about 85, 90 degrees C. This is, should impure, ensure pretty good evaporation. Now, here it's going really slow. Typically what we have to do first, and you can kind of see it in the bump trap here, is we have to wet the rotovap first. So it takes a little while for it to get going when we first start it up. That said, once it gets running, it goes really fast. So why do we use a rotovap? If you were to try to do this in a hood by solvent evaporation, it would go super, super slow. In fact, this is a pretty healthy quantity of ethanol here. This is roughly 45 mLs of ethanol. So it's gonna take a little while for this to get off, probably enough that I'll make cut the video off early. But if you were to do this with a rotovap, this is gonna take a lot less than 30 to 40 minutes. We're probably talking less than 10 minutes to make it happen. Now, the other major advantage here of a rotovap is that if you look in this, hasn't quite happened yet. We're still getting wetting of the bump trap here. But what will happen is it will start condensing down pretty pure vapors of whatever our solvent is. So in this case, we're um, working with ethanol. And what we'll start seeing very shortly, because the vapor, air, vapor layer has moved up, is we'll see um, ethanol condense back down in this chamber. So um, I'm going to cut the video off here just so you don't have to sit here and literally watch ethanol dry. And I'll show you what it looks like when it gets done. All right, so I let my rotovap run to completion here, and what you can see sliding along is the pure white um, acid aniline with a little bit of aniline impurity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the rotation, open up the pump, open up the valve, turn out the pump, and what you can see back here, and hopefully you can see it, is I've got a nice little reservoir here of the solvent that came off. So and actually when I get done with this video, I'm gonna cheat and use the solvent to get out my condensed material. So, what we're going to do next, and we're going to kind of do this off video, just to save ourselves a little time, is that I've now got this pure material of acid analyte with whatever impurities were soluble in the ethanol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of grease, uh, acetone, remove the grease that's at the top, weigh it, and this is going to give me my final mass of acid analyte that was recovered.